hello. My name is Jorb. I love gear. Um, this video is going to be four plus one, however you want to count them, maybe five. Tips and ideas and concepts, techniques for getting lo-fi sounds out of the DeepMind 12. Some will involve synthesis, some will involve the effects section, and we're going to take advantage of the modulation matrix in the end as well. If it sounds like that'll be of value to you, I encourage you to stick around. If you are subscribed, I really appreciate you. It means the world to me. 800 people, bless you. <laughs> I think I have something to say, and I just I can't believe it. So grateful. Uh, if you aren't subscribed and you made it this far in the video, uh, or you clicked in the first place, you've proven to yourself that this content has value to you. So if you subscribe, you don't have to search in the future. You'll get introduced to new ideas, techniques, gear, concepts that uh, some of them will be helpful to you, and some of them you didn't even know you wanted to learn about. And I think that's pretty special. Okay, I'm done grifting. <laughs> Let's get on to learning. First things first, whenever I make a patch, I start with the default, and so to get there you hold program, and press compare, and this is our default patch. I like to turn off the square wave, Get I click on both my VCA and VCF envelopes at the same time, just press two buttons at once, then I make sure we just have sustain on. Um, I'll change that myself when I want to get there, and then I turn off velocity sensitivity for the VCF and the VCA. Okay, if I want it, I'll turn it on later. And then just so we have a good sound. Less sustain. Something that decays, a little bit of filter movement. I like that. And a little bit of keyboard contribution. So we just have something to play with. Uh, and then this is the first trick, and you're gonna be like, that's not a trick, I knew that. And just wait, okay? <laughs> I'm going to show you a few ways to achieve it. Pitch modulation. Often, a lot of times, you're going to hear pitch modulation in sounds that are branded as lo-fi or lo-fi music, including synth sounds, uh, which, just to say it now, doesn't necessarily mean vintage synthesis, vintage analog polysynths, whatever. Uh, but thinking about those ideas and acoustic instruments, thinking about both of those can help us get to this point. How do those behave on a recording? How do those behave uh, in a room? And decay like this makes it feel sort of closer to being a real instrument. Okay, if you disagree with me, that's okay. <laughs> and rule of thumb for all of these, and I'll say it now, subtlety. Okay, pitch modulation. We're going to make it really dramatic at first so we can hear it. And it's right here on the panel. I'm going to turn up our sustain so we can continue to hear it. Dramatic and really, really busy because if we look into the edit menu of the LFOs, the phase is set to poly. That means for each of our 12 voices, there's a different LFO one, right? So see how this is slow and cyclical right now? Every time I hit a key, it jumps to a new value because it's showing for each individual voice where that LFO one is. But if we flick this to mono, it's unbothered by that. It does its own thing, which is true to a vintage synth. Okay, not necessarily our goal, uh, but in these moving all together. Can be nice. And if you want to get really precise, so go to this main menu here and then move a fader you want to be precise, bring it all the way to the bottom and see this says oscillator one pitch mod. We can click up with the wheel now, get it really subtle. Okay, if we slow down our LFO, now it's really slow. It's more an effect or a component that makes us think that it's more low fidelity. And if it's fast, it's kind of like part of the synthesis, right? And right now, we're going to use LFO 1 as a way of convincing you or tricking your ears or letting you think or associating this with low fidelity things. Okay? And now this is cyclical and rhythmic and predictable. And we want it to be sort of random, right? If this is lo-fi, it's a bad cassette tape. It's one of those cheap old record players with a speaker built in. We want it to be random. And so these last two LFO options are good for that. So sample and hold, and I'm just going to turn this pitch mod up so you can hear it really dramatically. It'll just jump 
directly between different values. Well, we want it to be a little smoother, right? And so let's go down to Sample and Glide. Same thing, only it's smooth between those changes. Okay? And so we'll go back to Sample and Hold, and we can decide the rate of how fast we want it to slew in the LFO menu. And this doesn't have to be on Sample and Hold. You can do this on any of the shapes. Uh, we're going to turn it up a little bit, and if we watch the light, you can see that reflected. I'm going to try and zoom in on that. I'm saying it now, so I actually do it in editing. <laughs> Good. A less dramatic pitch mod. Go back up to our 20 cents. Alrighty. Okay, now what if I want to be able to make it dramatic, but not leave it dramatic all the time? Well, we can change that amount with the wheel right through the edit menu of oscillator one. So wheel to pitch mod, let's turn it all the way up so it's really dramatic. As I move up this modulation wheel, it'll it's just like moving this knob up. We can dial right in, and we don't need it all the way at 255, I'll put it down here. So this is full. If I don't want it on, I can leave it down here. Okay, now back to what I originally said, going to our mono phase. Think about what that means. Every voice I play is going to be modulated in pitch the same amount that we see on this light right here, right? And if we want this to be lo-fi and random and alive and warbly or whatever you want to call it, now that we're doing it randomly, we might want it to be polyphase. So each one of these has a different pitch shifted. So each one of these is pitch shifted by a different value, by a different amount. And it can sound a little busier, especially at high modulation. It can become a lot more noticeable. Let's slow the rate down. So what we've done, we have our pitch randomly jumping around to a few different values. There is a sort of a macro in the voice modes here to do that already. So it's under the poly header. And then down here at the bottom, oscillator and parameter drift and the rate of that drift. So we're going to introduce some rate and I'm going to turn off pitch mod and move my wheel down. Okay, there's our sound. Here's some oscillator drift. I'm going to turn it all the way up just so we can hear it. Actually, you hear that? <laughs> Each one is a different value. And this LFO one is totally out of play now. All right, so we can do that in here just with one bunch of settings and free our LFO one up to do whatever it is we want it to do. And the same thing for parameter drift. You hear it changing a lot of these envelope times in the VCF cutoff, things like that. Okay, so we're going to introduce, we're going to leave it around 25-ish. A little higher on both. Just to make things sort of drop out of phase a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to go back to our LFO one since we freed it up. In this, I don't think I mentioned this earlier, but if you hold edit and move the slider, you'll change the shape. I'm going to put it on triangle and slow it down. Since we had slew on earlier, I'm going to turn it off. Go back to mono phase. Wonderful. A little more. Okay, that's all I want to say about pitch mod. Uh, we could, of course, do some things with the mod matrix, but we'll come back to that later. Next, changing your overall EQ. And I'm going to show you two ways to do that. Okay, when I say changing your overall EQ, think of your low end and your high end on a spectrum. And something that's low fidelity, probably, not necessarily, will lose some of both. That'll be a lot of the mids. And I say generally, it doesn't have to be. One of the ways you can do that is just with the synthesis of the DeepMind, right? We just reduce our cutoff and our envelope contribution. That's less high end. If we turn up the high pass filter, that's less low end.
Now we're like, you know, the speaker on the cheapest radio you've ever seen. <laughs> okay? And I don't think that's a great way to accomplish this. Because there's a lot of other things I like to do with my synthesis options, but I want you to know it's there. And the high-pass filter, which, if you aren't familiar, sorry. It brings you... It brings your low end. It takes away your low end. All it leaves is your high end, okay? That's off. That's all the way up. So maybe an intro. And you slap it down for the rest of the track. Okay? I think there's a better way to do that, and it's here in the effects section. There's a few we can do it with, but I'll show you the one that's the most straightforward to me. This Midas EQ. And so first, if we're on bypass... We don't go through any of the effects chains. If we're on send, our analog signal gets mixed with the affected signal. I hear a little bit of phase cancellation with that, so I tend to use insert more often, especially with an effect like this that takes the whole signal and does something to it. You hear what I'm saying? We haven't lost anything. Sort of a nasally quality to that, that phase cancellation. So here's bypass, and then back to insert. I think those are closer than bypass and send. And that might be desirable to you, but just know that it's there. And we're going to work on insert. Okay, and then you go down and hit effects to get into its specific settings. I'm going to do that same thing. I'm going to leave us with more mids than anything else. Okay, and so this is divided into four bands. And frequency is where those bands are at in the spectrum. So low shelf frequency, 82 hertz. Low mid frequency, 413 low mid sorry <laughs> low mid frequency high mid frequency and then the high shelf frequency four bands and the q is their resonance how sharp they are and the gain is their relative gain their relative volume and so i'm going to turn down our low gain and i'm going to turn down our high mid gain i'm going to turn down our high shelf gain so all we're left with is low mids and high mids. Actually, this is just low mids right now. I think it's still a little muddy. Get some more high mids. Actually, I think I want more of that than the low mids. Let's make that less sharp. a little dustier, a little muddier, right? Okay, of course you can adjust this to taste and where these frequencies are at in the spectrum. And that's what this is doing, deciding where in the spectrum is boosted or cut by that EQ. So here's EQ in and then out. That's where we started, fuller, more out is where we started. Fuller frequency range. More is taken up, right? EQ in. Thin. Sort of lacking. And for lo-fi stuff, that might be what you want. And let's do another. Here we go. This is the enhancer. It's another EQ. I think this one's a little harder to use because it's harder to figure out where your frequencies are. So I'm going to turn down our bass gain. I'm going to turn up our mid gain and our mid resonance. We're going to turn down our high gain and our high frequency will be a little lower. In this solo, which I think is more of a tool to let you hear what's added, what's extra, when the settings are done like this and you have solo on, it sounds a little bit like that idea like you're hearing on a shitty speaker. Okay, interesting. Alrighty, so those are those two. I prefer the Midas EQ, and I think it's easier to understand than the Enhancer, but the Enhancer has labels that might be more helpful to you, and that solo makes it really, really easy to get to just a lot of mids. Okay, alrighty, next up is one you might be like, that doesn't count. I think it does. <laughs> this is 
typical general expected modulation effects. So we're going to go to chorus first, because, come on, it's Juno. Lovely. We can make it more dramatic. Turn up our widths and our delays. Does sound good. I think now it's, it's important to add some space. Once you hit chorus, come on, you need some reverb. I think the plate reverb is a good choice for being a little busy, a little old. Subtlety, guys, remember? <laughs> that is so busy. Decay. Size. There you go, dampening. Get rid of our high end. Diffusion lower. Something about it still. That's what I like. Much better. Just a high cut here as well. Darker. Cool. We'll do a little less decay. I am into that. Again, those might seem like real tips to you. Might not seem like real tips to you, but I gotta bring them up. There is another chorus. The chorus D is based on Roland's Dimension D, and the settings are a lot less complicated. It's just a bunch of individual switches that are different amounts of chorus. You can turn a bunch on, stereo or mono, we'll leave it in stereo, and on or off. So here's off, and on, subtlety. Turn on mix to 100%. Let's do just two and four. This sounds very synthy to me right now. I like that. Flanger. My preferred over chorus is flanger. Something that's throatier more mysterious, weirder. Okay. I'm going to leave that as it is, and I'm showing you both of these because we don't need to use two effect slots. We can just use one. There's a combination flanger and reverb. Without much tweaking, I'm fond of that sound. A little less decay, a little more dampening. Lovely. Turn the mix all the way up to 100. Also sounds good. Zero. Man, doesn't that sound bad now? Lovely. That's kind of another one. Again, one of these is the plus one. I'm not going to tell you which. <laughs> but this tell ray delay. Okay, let's just do some delays now because we haven't done any. We've done plenty of reverbs. If we start with, there's like, they're just called delay. And there's combination delay and reverb as well. And chorus reverb as well. So you can save some slots, which is a good practice. But normal delays sound pristine, and that's not really what we want. And all we need to do is cut the high end. Already. Love it. Even just sort of cutting the highs a little bit, not even precisely. To me, sounds a lot better. Uh, and one thing I want to show you, the effects order really matters. You see this list, one, two, three, four. Um, that, right now, the flange verb is going through the delay. I want that to be the last thing. 
And so if you hold effects and then move the rotary here, you can change the order. So now our delay is first. And that's more of a conventional effects order. There are not any rules, whatever sounds good to you. Lovely. Okay, now we're just busier space here, and I don't necessarily consider that to be more low fidelity. It just kind of sounds better. So I'm going to turn both of these off to get back to where we were, and I'm going to show you one of my favorite effects, the Tell Ray delay. Unlike the cool, clean, pristine delays we just heard, these are simple, straightforward, and they already sound dusty. So our delay is our time. Sustain is our feedback. Wobble is described in the menu as amount of wobble caused by age and quality of build materials. How sick is that? So we turn that shit all the way up. And tone is sort of a general, they'd say it controls the tone of the delays. Sounds to me like all the way up, high and mids, all the way down, low and mids. So we're gonna put it kinda low but near the middle. One of the things this will do You can change your delay time while things are in the buffer. And it'll modulate those things. So this is jumping ahead a little bit, but we can change those things in the mod matrix. And you can just scroll to select your source or hold mod, the whole row gets highlighted, and then move whatever it is you want to affect your source. I'm gonna use pitch bend, and I'll show you why. Go all the way up to data entry, and this is effect three. Go on our delay time. Okay, in our voice uh, options, which are in our voice edit, which is under the poly header, press it twice. And then our pitch bend range is different for positive and negative. And so we can turn it all the way off for one of those. So now, when I bend up, we're going to positively change the delay on that tell ray delay. So I have that sort of tape stop effect almost. And let's do another thing. Hold mod till it's highlighted move the pitch wheel. We want it to be positive. Dead entry all the way up. Effect three, sustain, which is our feedback. So it runs away, drops in pitch. And now we'll feedback, we'll self-oscillate. And I did that in our intro. And I'm sure that's the trick you wanted to show. <laughs> I'm sure that's the trick you wanted me to show. <laughs> So there that is. Okay, back to, that's pretty much all I want to show for modulation effects uh, and time-based effects. Okay, that's, man, that sounds good, doesn't it? I'm just in love with the sound, and I'm gonna brag a little bit. I had one of these units. Here it is on screen. <laughs> love that. I'm actually gonna leave that on for the rest of the changes we do. And then two more here. Okay, I'm gonna call these changers. Okay, and you're probably gonna be like, what, that's a dumb name. It kind of is, but, and it's kind of like the EQs as well, but I think these more dramatically change everything that you're hearing, okay? So we're gonna start with the rack amp. I'm gonna move the mix way low on our Tel Ray delay, but the rack amp simulates listening to your sound projected through a guitar speaker, okay? And I think does more and does more interesting stuff. Ooh, that is loud. Turn down the level. Uh, this does what the EQ does, but more interesting and with gain. 
uh, and this sort of a real life target. And so buzz is your low end gain. So we'll move that pretty low. Punch is your mid, upper mid sort of a presence. So you're gonna leave that high. And crunch is your high end. So that's low. And that's at least how I, <clears throat> excuse me, that's at least how I hear it. Here's some drive as well. I think that sounds wonderful. But it's changing. It's not just shifting your EQ curve. Oops. It's not just shifting your EQ curve. You're really hearing something different. And so let's turn the cab off as well. And this will be a lot more high end. Yeah. And then. Much better. Much better. Okay. I'm going to turn our mix even lower. It's distracting me because it sounds so good. <laughs> Okay, that's that one. I think the rack amp, I, I put it down here instead of putting it by the EQs because I think the distortion is better. Uh, you could call that the plus one. You could call this, the, you could call any of these the plus one. I'm not going to count them out for you. <laughs> I'm mentioning five things and I don't think one of them is as important. Okay, this is the big, big changer and this is kind of a good trick that I don't know. I haven't seen a lot of people do, but this decimator delay bit crushes your repeats, okay? And I like that, and it sounds good. But I think there's a more interesting way to use it. We're going to turn our mix all the way up to 100. There's no dry signal, right? Listen to the, listen to the key press. <laughs> and then the whole delay before you hear anything. But we can move this way low at the bottom. Actually, it's synced with our arpeggiator or sequencer. But I'm going to bring this up to the first. That's just a fixed time or flat time one millisecond, which is negligible delay to me, and listen to that. This is sort of a different lo-fi, okay? We're listening to this through the speaker or the sampler of a Game Boy Advanced, <laughs> for example, but down sampling way high. Can't even... It's a lot, even, it's even hard to, I'm getting distracted. Okay, I like this a lot, and we're going to change our bit reduction to be a little more dramatic. Whatever, 16 bits? That's a bit number, right? I like this, but that, I guess it's simulating a Nyquist frequency. You hear that high pitched? That shifts in pitch when I change this down sample. I want that to sort of warble a little bit. And lucky for us, we haven't used LFO2 at all. So I'm going to set that all the way down to sample and glide relatively slow. We're going to jump into the mod matrix. We're going to point LFO2 positively to, I think it's effect one. DSM, downsampling, we're going to make it less dramatic. You hear that? Nyquist just moving around. That to me feels more genuine. And since there's only one effect, Polly won't do anything, so I'm just going to leave it on mono so we can see what, what's happening here. I guess let me explain that better. Uh, in your effects section, there aren't 12 versions of this for every voice, right? And so modulating with an LFO, where you have a different, you have 12 of them, one for every voice, when you're on polyphase, doesn't help you at all. Mono, because you're only going to be able to change the one effect at a time, might as well be able to control and see what that's going to be by leaving your LFO2 on mono. That might be a little high concept, depending on who you are and your experience. But I think it's important to bring up, <laughs> I'm distracted, I'm just listening to that Nyquist. Right now, I also want a little LFO modulation of the filter. 
So I'm going to go in our edit and point that to free LFO. Oh no, we've used LFO1 and we've used LFO2. What options do we have? Well, we have the mod matrix and we have an envelope three, okay? And if you don't know, one of the tricks you can do with the envelopes is make them into an LFO. So click into it twice and you can set the triggering option to loop. And when I draw my LFOs, I put sustain and release down to zero and put the trigger on loop and then I draw my shape with these first two, okay? And so envelope three is going to positively modulate our filter cutoff. Okay, and so let's watch me draw that shape. Higher times, longer times, are slower LFO, right? So we'll leave that there and then use our curves to draw something smoother. I kind of like it being asymmetrical, actually. Okay, I don't like it being evenly cyclical. I can go into here and use an LFO to modulate our envelopes. And you're saying, oh, we already used LFO2 for something. Let's use it for two things. These things will be related, if not in time. So LFO2 will slightly positively modulate. Uh, we want to change the shape, or sorry, we want to change the rate of our LFO, that's mod 3, right? Well, if I do our trick, I can't do attack and decay at the same time, but lucky for us, if we scroll backwards, we have envelope three rates, which is all of them. Let's make it really dramatic. Watch this. When this is high, it's slower. Cool? This is quickly become a different kind of lo-fi. I'm so fond of it. Lovely. Awesome. You know what? I'm just going to talk out over this. This was sort of a window tour of lo-fi ideas. I don't know if this was a great... I don't know if this was a great way for me to convey these ideas or not. Tell me if it worked for you and tell me if it didn't. Um, I, in effect, did the same thing. I sit down and create one patch over a relatively long amount of time and just come out with something that I wasn't necessarily aiming for. But I, I do feel like I, I talked about a lot of important topics. So I hope the topic of the video was clear enough from the start. I'm a little worried it wasn't. Let me know. This is all, this is your comment section, okay? This is your feedback section. <laughs> Tell me, was the topic of the video clear from the start? Is this format good? Did I meander too much? Should this be snappier? Should I do these same ideas, but each of them in their own little video? Just talk about the decimator delay. Just talk about the tell ray. All these things. If you made it through the whole video, First of all, God bless you. <laughs> but let me know if there's a better way to present these ideas or this format. Okay? Okay. That's it. My name is Majorb. I love gear. I'm definitely going to keep this patch. I actually like it very much. <laughs> uh, I hope you get use out of these ideas, these concepts. Appreciate you watching. I'll see you in the next one.